What is up, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast to break down the South region and give you instant really analysis of this region as the bracket just came out less than an hour ago. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest in March Madness news all throughout the greatest time of the year for sports. We got opening day and baseball afterwards, but hey, NCAA tournament, there is absolutely nothing like the madness. All right, be sure to hit that big red button and turn it gray so you can stay in the know all month long on everything involving all of the madness and the NCAA tournament. But let's jump into the South region where the Arizona Wildcats are the number one seed overall in the South region. Now, Gonzaga, if you want to look at them, you can go to our West region breakdown where Gonzaga is the number one overall seed, not only in their region, but in the tournament. Arizona, the second overall number one seed. They will face off against Wright State or Bryant, the winner of that play-in game. Either way, let's be honest, we're picking Arizona. Now, this is where things get interesting in the South region. You've got Seton Hall and TCU. TCU has been one of the hottest teams in the country. They did lose to Kansas in the Big 12 tournament, but have an impressive resume. I am taking the Horned Frogs from the Big 12 to beat Seton Hall of the Big East. Now, in the 5-12 matchup, I'll be honest with you, the seeding I do not get the most is the Houston Cougars. I just don't get it. They have zero quad one wins. Sure, they have a lot of quad two and quad three wins, and that's where they did a lot of their damage. But they have zero. Let me repeat that. Zero quad one wins. It makes no sense to me how they are on the five seed line. I even question if they should be a six seed. But here they are on the five seed line, and they are facing off against UAB. That being said, I do think Houston wins this matchup just because I don't think UAB has enough athleticism on the outside. And I'll say this about Houston as a positive. They have really bounced back after losing two of their best players early on to begin the year, but I don't think they last long in this tournament because listen to this. In the 4-13 matchup, you've got the Illini of Illinois against Chattanooga, and I'll say this. I am picking Chattanooga to win the 13 over the 4. Yes, I love Tennessee Chattanooga. They are explosive. They have elite guard play. They know what to do on the perimeter and that's where the Illini struggle. They have Kofi Coburn down low to the Illini, but they struggle on the outside. Yes, they've got a couple of good guards out there, but I think overall when it's all said and done, Chattanooga pulls off the upset. Kind of a stunner because I know a lot of people like Illinois, but I'm going with the 13 seed Chattanooga to beat Illinois and face off against Houston in the round of 32. Moving on down further down the bracket, we have the sixth versus the 11, and that is Colorado State. The Rams at the sixth seed in the South against the Michigan Wolverines and the punch and Jawan Howards. A kid, kind of. But I got Colorado State in this one. I like Michigan to say the least, but I don't know what Michigan is at this point. I really don't. They have the talent. They have the experience somewhat. But really, I just don't know what they are. And that's concerning at this point in the year. So give me an underrated Colorado State team to make it to the second round. As for the three and the 14, it's Tennessee at the three seed in the South region against Longwood. Listen, I'm probably higher on Tennessee than most people. I think they absolutely obliterate Longwood and easily move on to the round of 32. As for the seven and the 10 matchup, we've got Ohio State in the fighting sister jeans of Loyola Chicago. And Porter Moser might not be there, but I am taking Loyola Chicago to beat Ohio State and move on to the round of 32. Who will they be facing off against? Well, it'll be the winner of Villanova in Delaware as the Wildcats of Villanova are the two seed and Delaware and Jameer Nelson's son are the 15 seed in the South region. Sorry, Jameer. I am taking Villanova to beat the 15 seeded Delaware. Now we'll start from the bottom. We've got Villanova and Loyola Chicago. I don't think this is another Cinderella run for Loyola. Give me Villanova. I love what the Wildcats are doing this year up in Philly. As for the three and six matchup again, as I mentioned, Tennessee, Give me all of the exposure I can get. I think the volunteers could potentially make the final four and I might just have them there. You're going to have to wait till the end of the video to see as for the next matchup, we've got Houston in tenant in Chattanooga right there. Give me Chattanooga. I'm going Chattanooga. I mean, I just don't see the hype around Houston. I don't get it. 
I, I don't see how they are on the five line. And that is no disrespect to Calvin Sampson, who had a team in the final four last year. But when you lose your two best players and have zero quad one wins, how the hell are you a five seed? I don't get it. I'm getting Chattanooga, and yes, that is a 13 seed in the Sweet 16 in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Let's see how far they go because they'll match up against either Arizona or TCU, and I think Jamie Dixon's crew falls flat and doesn't beat the Wildcats. I really like what Tommy Lloyd is doing out in the desert. Give me the Arizona Wildcats to move on to the second weekend of the tournament. Now they will face off against the number 13 seed of Chattanooga, and I will take you didn't think I was going to pick Chattanooga here, did you? Of course. I'm picking the Wildcats in this one. The Cinderella run ends. But then there's Tennessee and Villanova. And I'm telling you right now, I am picking Tennessee. They are a team I do not want to see with that defense. And they are not the most athletic team. But when they get shots to go down with that defense that is top three, according to Ken Palm, they are virtually unbeatable. Winning the SEC championship, they are electric. Give me Rick Barnes and the Volunteers to make it to the Elite Eight. And that's where we have the Volunteers against the Wildcats. And I have Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers heading down to New Orleans after beating the number one seed in the South region, the Arizona Wildcats. And yes, the Tennessee Volunteers will head down to New Orleans as winners of the South region in the NCAA tournament. Was that enough madness in that bracket? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. I'm giving you daily videos right here on March Madness in the NCAA tournament. And hey, I have two 13 seeds going to the Sweet 16. Who's the other one other than Chattanooga in this video? You're going to have to look at the other videos and see. Again, this is the Back to 12 podcast. I'm R.C. Maxfield. Hit that big red button right there and turn it gray to stay in the know on March Madness all month long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.